Good morning and welcome to Indiana Ships Medicare Monday. I am Melanie Garland and I am joined by my two lovely co-hosts and we were just talking it's been a while since the three of us have been on together so we're it feels so good to be reunited ladies so we have Miss Susan Spilly. Good morning Susan and we have Miss Megan Rogers. Good morning. So our topic for today is Medicare's mental health coverage benefits. So we have a great presentation for you uh, this morning that we're going to dive right into. And just like all of our other presentations, we monitor our chat throughout this presentation. So if you have any questions, um, just type it into the comment section of this video. Um, Susan will be monitoring that for us this morning. So she'll uh, let make sure Megan has the answers to all of your questions, right, Megan? I don't have to answer any this morning, right? <laughs> no, we'll make Susan answer them all. Okay, sounds like a plan. <laughs> all right, but thank you for joining us. And um, just like all of our other presentations, these are saved to our page for later viewing. So if you're tuning in and and you, you've got to go somewhere or you get interrupted, or maybe you're thinking of someone you know that can benefit from this information, um, they can always access it later. So let's go ahead and get this pulled up here. All right, and Megan, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Wonderful, thank you, Melanie. And yes, it feels so good to have the three of us back. It always feels like something's missing when it's only two of us or just one of us and someone different. It's not the same. All right, so. Today, we're gonna to talk about mental health coverage and Medicare. But first, let's talk about some stats um, that are out there um, regarding mental health. Melanie, if you can move the slides a couple for me, that would be fantastic. Thank you. So May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and now these are some older stats, I think, um, they're all from 2021. Um, I couldn't find any that were really extremely newer, um, but they're still very important numbers to think about and consider. So 15% of individuals that are 60 years old have a mental health diagnosis, 15%. Um, in Indiana, back in 2021, almost 30% of Indiana residents have anxiety and depression and have an unmet need of counseling. So they're going um, somewhat untreated with their mental health diagnosis. One in five US adults live with a mental illness. That comes to almost 60 million in 2021. And depression is the most prevalent mental health diagnosis among older adults. Those are pretty staggering numbers, in my opinion. Um, and then uh, this other stat, I think this one is a little bit newer. Um, this one indicates that more than 40% of US adults report struggling with pandemic related mental health or substance abuse. So the pandemic that we just dealt with um, COVID, that has caused some increased mental health issues with U.S. adults. Next slide, please. And then this one is the one that was really um, triggering for me. The average delay between symptom onset and treatment is 11 years. The average number between before someone will get treatment, whether that's them seeking treatment or able to find treatment is 11 years. I mean, going 11 years without help with your mental health is extremely long in my opinion. I mean, that that's crazy. Um, so that's why we wanted to make sure that we talk to everyone about how Medicare will help you or cover mental health treatment. Because if you have Medicare, you can get that treatment through your insurance. It's covered. Um, 
So we're gonna talk about how that is covered under Medicare on the next slide. So Part B covers most of the mental health coverage under Medicare. Now, if you have an Advantage plan, these would also be covered in that Advantage plan as well because they, cover, they have to cover everything that your original Medicare Part A or Part B covers. So as we're talking about um, Part B and you have an Advantage plan, it would be covered as well on that plan. So Part B is gonna cover one depression screening per year in your annual wellness check, usually with no copay because it's a preventative screening, individual and group psychotherapy with doctors, family counseling um, is another covered service under Medicare, testing to find out if you're getting the services you need, and if your current treatment is helping you, a psychiatric evaluation and medication management. Next slide, please. Part B also covers certain prescription drugs that aren't usually self-administered like injections. So a lot of our injections on Medicare are either gonna be covered under Part B or Part D. So especially if you're getting the injections um, at the doctor's office, you know, um, osteoporosis medic injections are a popular one at the doctor's office, mental health medications at the doctor's office are popular under Part B. So it's important to know that not all your medication is going to be covered under Part B, especially if it's um, certain injections. So if the doctor has to inject it or a nurse practitioner or a nurse, Part B is going to cover that. Um, diagnostic tests, um, hospitalization. So if your um, mental health diagnosis is unstable and you need some hospital coverage or some hospital treatment, um, that might be covered under Part B. And then those preventative services like that depression screening that I, I talked about. So these are the preventative services that are covered under Part B. And there are some that are specific to mental health or substance abuse. So the ones in red would cover mental health or substance abuse coverage. So alcohol misuse screenings and counseling, um, depression screenings. Um, when you're new to Medicare, you get a one-time welcome to Medicare preventative visit. And that might be where they're going to do that depression screening or that alcohol misuse screening and talk about possible counseling that is needed for either the substance abuse or the depression. And talking about, you know, do you need, you know, counseling? Do you need medication? Do you need referrals to other mental health individuals? And then yearly, you'll have a yearly wellness visit where they'll do those same screenings um, and conversations about counseling, medication, how are you feeling, how are you doing, is everything under control? So who can you talk to for mental health treatment under your Part B or your Advantage plan? So Part B is gonna cover mental health services and visits with um, these types of health professionals, psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, clinical social workers, clinical nurse specialists, nurse practitioners, or physician assistants. So rather that being at your primary care physician's office, or if they refer you to um, a psychiatrist or psychologist for therapy or further medication management. Susan, do you have a question or a comment? I do. Can you talk about what accepting assignment means? And does that I sure mean can. that um, these are covered only if you accept assignment or they just might have to pay extra if they don't? Good question. So when you have Medicare and you're going to see any 
type of doctor, medical, specialist, mental health doctor, you want to make sure that that provider takes what's called assignment, like homework assignment. That means that that provider is okay with the Medicare reimbursement payment that they're going to give the provider. As like with most insurances, the doctor's visit might be, let's say $200, but the insurance is not going to reimburse that amount. They may only reimburse a hundred and then you pay whatever your um, copay amount is. So Medicare is the same way where it's going to pay a lower amount than the office visit. But if that doctor doesn't agree to take assignment, that doesn't mean you can't go there. It means that they're going to charge you an extra, I think it's 15% of the visit. So that's why you want to make sure that they take assignment. Did that answer your question, Susan? And was I correct? Yes. Yeah, so what I what I think the message is, if you don't want to have any extra out of pocket mm -hmm. when you go to a Medicare provider of services, make sure they accept Medicare assignment. Mm -hmm. And if they yes. don't, then it's probably a wise idea to figure out how much your extra charge is going to be mm -hmm. because it can be up to 15%, just like you said, Megan, right. of the Medicare cost of the service. Wonderful. Yes, that is a perfect explanation of the message. So it's not just a, enough to, when you call to ask, you know, do you take Medicare? You want to make sure, you know, do you take Medicare? assignment or do you take Medicare and assignment? Um, and then for those with an Advantage plan, you need to not just ask if they take Medicare, you need to ask if they take the exact name of your plan. Do you take Anthem Choice Blue PPO1 or whatever the name on your card is? Because it's a step further than just Medicare, it's a specific plan. Thank you for that, Susan. Great information. Next slide, please. So where can you go for mental health treatment under Part B or your Advantage plan? Um, Part B will cover outpatient mental health services. So again, um, like your primary doctor or if your primary doctor refers you to a therapist or a psychiatrist or someone you know, more um, specialized in mental health, just like, you know, a cardiologist or a um, gynecologist, you know, the specialties, mental health is a specialty as well. Um, so again, the doctor's office or a specialty mental health provider's office, um, hospital outpatient department. So if you're having, again, some, your mental health is unstable, or a community mental health center. And usually those community mental health centers, at least in my area, you know, they have the psychiatrist, they have the therapist, they have um, care managers, they have skills trainers to help you manage your mental health on a day-to-day -day basis. Next slide, please. Now, what about part A? So part B, um, is our outpatient. But what if we're needing um, Part A inpatient treatment? Um, and again, anything covered under Part A has to be covered under your Advantage plan. Um, so when I say Part A, it's also applying to those with um, Advantage plans as well. So if you're having some <laughs> Is, you know, your mental health is unstable, you're needing some more um, emergency care with your mental health. Part A covers mental health care um, at a hospital as an inpatient individual. Um, you can get these either at a general hospital or a psychiatric hospital. Now, Part A, we're not gonna go into this because it's a lengthy explanation, but um, Part A does have something that you should be mindful of as benefit periods. 
that's where um, if you're in the hospital or nursing home and you're gonna be under a benefit period and then when you go home back to the community for 60 days or more, you're gonna go into another benefit period. What that affects is if you're gonna pay a new deductible each time you go into the hospital or um, your hospital and your nursing home days are capped at how many days you're allowed to be in either of those facilities in a benefit period. So it's either gonna affect your co-pays, deductibles, or the amount of time that you have in a benefit period. Um, that's my little elevator speech on a benefit period. Um, but when you're needing psychiatric help or mental health help, there's no limit to the number of benefit periods you can have. Um, well, actually, I think that's with any service, even medical. Um, so whether you're getting help in a mental health care hospital or mental health care in general or a psychiatric hospital. Um, however, this is where I was trying to get to. If you're in a psychiatric hospital instead of a general hospital, Part A is only going to pay up to 190 days of inpatient psych psychiatric hospital services during your lifetime. So when it comes to the psychiatric services, the benefit period is a little bit different um, because the days are not per benefit period, it's per lifetime. Melanie, do you have an addition to that whole slide that I messed up? No, you did a great <laughs> job. I just think the benefit periods can be really confusing. So if, if you were wanting more information on how those work, you know, every Medicare beneficiary does get their Medicare and you handbook. So that information would be in there, um, you know, with the, the mental health is diff, not different, but it's, it's categorized in there mm -hmm. differently as well. So you can see those days. And then if you are not on original Medicare and you have an Advantage plan, your plan details of your Advantage plan would go over those daily copays and um, out of pocket costs for you. So it can be really confusing, but it it's always good to know how it's covered so that you do access the services if you do need them. Yes, great, great. addition, Melanie, thank you. Yes. And that's a great point too, even though, um, you know, I keep mentioning that if, it's, if a service is covered under original Medicare Part A or Part B, it'll be covered under your Advantage plan. Keep in mind, that your co-pays and out-of-pocket costs and deductibles are gonna be different on the Advantage plan than original Medicare. Um, and that Advantage plan is determining if something gets approved. So there, you know, just because it's covered doesn't necessarily mean all the time that they may approve something for you. Um, any other thoughts or questions, ladies? Susan, are there anything in the chat box to get anything emailed or texted to you? No, just that one from before about assignments. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so, and like Melanie said, if you have any additional questions on the benefit periods uh, or anything else on mental health or Medicare in general, you can give us a call at 1-800-452-4800. You can find us on social media like you have today. Um, you can go to our website. You can chat in. Um, we always check our chat, our Facebook Messenger, and the chat comments of the videos for days to come to make sure we're not missing anything. So you can reach out to us if you do have questions. Um, and I am going to turn it over to Susan now to talk to us about June. Okay, we have an exciting lineup. Uh, we're gonna start off with June by providing some information in Spanish. So if you know of some folks who prefer to hear information in Spanish, please let them know that we're gonna be talking about some assistance programs. 
Uh, we try to do this at least once a quarter because it's important for Medicare beneficiaries, regardless of what language they speak, to know that there are programs that might help them pay for what Medicare doesn't. And it's not for, um, you know, the um, super, super low income folks, but it's for more of the middle to lower income folks. So check us out. Um, we can always provide that information to you, but you're going to hear it in Spanish on the 5th. And we're going to be joined by our new co-worker, Juan Manuel Guzman, who is um, a native Spanish speaker, and he's going to do that presentation for us. Then Megan and I are hitting the road and we are going east. Young women, we're going east. And we'll be in Arlington, Virginia for the National Council on Aging's Age Plus Action Conference. So we are going to um, have something for you from that conference. And uh, we're going to hear lots of great topics and learn about what's coming for people who um, are 60 and over. All righty. Then we're going to wind up the month with a presentation on AIDS and HIV. Um, we have Dr. Balt with us. And she's a very experienced practitioner uh, treating people living with HIV and AIDS. And she's going to talk to us about what's going on medically um, in the research and how Medicare covers HIV and AIDS uh, services and treatments. So join us for those and get your calendars marked and share away. And uh, anything else, ladies, before we say our goodbyes and sign off for the day? No, thank you both for joining us this morning. And thanks to our viewers for being on with us. And if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us. We hope you guys have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next time.